What's going on YouTube? It's Tej back again with another video. And today I'm giving you my picks for week 15 of the NFL season. Excited to bring it your way. Hopefully you all enjoy today's video. If you do, hit that like button and help me out a ton. And if you're new to the channel, want to see more football content in your life, hit that big red subscribe button. And most importantly, give me your picks for the week down below. Give me some update picks. Uh, we'll talk some betting. Love to have your thoughts in that area as well. So feel free to talk uh, football with me down in the comment section. If you're new to these videos, I am picking winners. You'll see my record last week. It was kind of a chalky week. Uh, therefore, my you know just picking winners looked pretty good in the season. I've done pretty well there. But we are going to talk against the spread for each and every game, too, that uh, I'm excited to talk about for today's video. Let's start with uh, Chiefs and Chargers. I, I'm going to go with the Chargers. They play that style of defense, right? Like Brandon Staley is going to give Patrick Mahomes and that Kansas City offense those two high safety looks. And they're going to force them to play conservative. Now, that could lead to a big day for you know CEH or if Mahomes is patient, maybe a lot, a lot of work for Kelsey underneath. Maybe they try to get the ball into the hands of Tyreek Hill in screen plays. There's, there's avenues for that, that offense to beat what L.A. wants to do. That said, they just haven't proven that they're willing to do that on, on a full game basis yet this season. So uh, they also might not have Chris Jones, Kansas City that is. They might not have Chris Jones. That's a big injury. I know the Chargers are dealing with some COVID issues uh, in their own right. But uh, Chris Jones has been a game wrecker and he's been a big part of why Kansas City's defense has been among the best in the NFL over the last six weeks during this win streak. But with him gone... I'm really worried about what Kansas City's defense might look like. So I'm going to go with the Chargers plus right home. Now, the only my only uh, reservation about this is I can't really see how the Chargers, like coming into the year, it would have been unfathomable for me to say the Chargers are going to sweep the Chiefs. And now that I'm picking this proposition, I'm that's what I'm saying. And I'm still a little hesitant on that. These teams feel like they should split. They're obviously, you know, very close. I had the Chiefs ahead of my Chargers, uh, ahead of the Chargers in my last power rankings. But I don't know. I just think when it comes to matchups, the Chargers really match up well with Kansas City. Moving on to the next game, Bills, Panthers. Give me the Bills. You know, they got to get back on the on their winning ways, right? They're better than a 7-6 and six record. Uh, and I am just, I'm selling uh, Carolina fast. The defense has kind of lost its edge, right? It was this, it was a good enough unit to where it could win games on their own. Now it doesn't feel as good. I still think it's a good defense. And this whole Cam Newton, P.J. Walker, in and out, yeah, it, it's kind of, an awkward time in Carolina, especially for the offense. So uh, give me the Bills. I'll take them to cover that spread. Going back to the Chargers, obviously, if I'm taking them, I'm, uh, yeah, I'll take the three and a half points with it. And then we get to this, the Saturday slate, which I'm excited to have Saturday NFL football. This line has moved a ton. I've already made a bet. I'm going to still go with the Browns. I know no Baker Mayfield more than likely, but uh, is Case Keenum versus like 75, 80% Baker Mayfield that different? And uh, I think that running game with Stefanski and you have Chubb, Hunt, Dearness Jones, too. Like, I think this team can run the football really well against the Raiders. Plus, they're at home. And when it comes to this game, the Browns need this game to continue to be a part of the playoff conversation, the wild card hunt. If they win this game, they might even move up into that 6-7 spot. The Raiders are out of it. Like, I know they're theoretically still in it, but the way that defense has been playing and, you know, We'll see if Darren Waller plays in this contest, but if he doesn't and there's no Henry Ruggs, I am not going to talk about the Raiders winning a contest because that offense just doesn't have enough firepower without those two. So tough time to be a Raiders fan for sure, but I'm taking the Browns. I'll give, I'll take the point and a half you're giving me with it. And then we get to maybe the game of the weekend, right? I'm going to go with New England on the road. This is tough. I do like that it's in a dome, right? So we might get a little bit better Mac Jones, a little bit better of Carson Wentz. Additionally, I don't think anybody's talking about this, but Frank Reich, this year in specific has proven he is a quarterback whisperer and he's one of the best offensive minds in football. And then Bill Belichick this year might be doing his best coaching of his career and specifically on the defensive side. So teams aside, a battle between head coaches, I am fascinated for what these teams' game plans look like. And then once the game's underway and we get you know a couple drives in for each team, what the chessboard starts to look like between Reich and Belichick. I'm super pumped to see that play out. But there are also two teams built really similarly. They have defenses that create turnovers. Um, this is a big game for Michael Pittman Jr. If he plays well against J.C. Jackson, he solidifies himself as not just the number one option on this team, but a legit number one wide receiver. So a lot to play for in his regard. But J.C. Jackson still playing for a contract on the other end of it, so I'm excited for that battle. But to continue my point, good defenses. They want to run the football, and then they set up play action with quarterbacks that maybe not are 
all world guys, not people we'd put in the top five, top 10 conversations, but they get the job done. And they don't necessarily have the greatest of weapons around those quarterbacks, but there have been some bright spots. Kendrick Bourne has been a really nice addition and played better than I think a lot of people anticipated. I'm a fan of Kendrick Bourne because he does a little bit of everything really well. And then Michael Pittman. I'm a Michael Pittman fan, but he's exceeded my expectations for this season. And they have the tight ends in the mix, running backs who can catch football. So these teams very similarly built. I'm going to go with New England. They're red hot. Now, the only reservation about this is the number one seed in the AFC, I'm convinced, is cursed. So that doesn't bode well for New England. And this game is at home for the Colts. And this is, if they don't win this game, the path to the playoffs is kind of tough. Uh, if they win this game, it becomes almost certain that they'll be in the playoffs. So this is a huge game for Indianapolis. Patriots, obviously, they want to win to keep the number one seed. That would be advantageous for them down the stretch, too. So a lot to play for, but I'm going to go with New England. They've been red hot, and I like what I've seen. They've been able to win in different ways, including only needing Mac Jones to throw three passes in a game, and that's impressive. Let's get to the Dolphins and Jets. I'm taking Miami. I'll take them to cover the 10 points, too. I, I just Zach Wilson looked good, or better. I don't want to say good, but better two weeks ago, and then, you know, it's just rough again last week. So Miami's coming off a bye. I think Brian Flores will have a similar Bill Belichick type of effect, and I think he has so far in his career, where he gets a week to rest and an extra time to prep. The opposing quarterback's going to feel it, and uh, considering it's a rookie QB, yeah, I'm not feeling uh, great about how this might turn out if you're a, you're a Jets fan. Eagles and Washington football team. I'm going to take the Eagles to win, but plus seven points. It depends on, you know, are we getting Kyle Allen or Taylor Heineke? I don't think there's that much of a difference, right? Heineke probably gives you a little bit higher of an upside and some more rushing ability than Kyle Allen, but Kyle Allen might be a little bit more consistent as a passer. I don't know. He's had his games where he looks okay, and then he has games where he looks like, you know, not even good enough to be a backup quarterback. So it, it's tough to tell. I'll take the Eagles to win. I think Washington's able to keep this game within a touchdown, though, so I'll take Washington football team to cover uh, the plus seven, or I'll take them to be able to lose by a touchdown or less. So uh, I think, especially considering interdivision contests, they always play weird. So I like Washington to cover, but I like Philadelphia to win. Then we get to the Cardinals, Lions. Cardinals need to win. I think they'll stomp on the Lions here. Plus, win in a dome, which obviously so does Arizona. So uh, that offense might be rolling to say the least uh cowboys and giants i'll take the cowboys to win and cover i I just i think this could be a huge day for demarcus lawrence michael parsons randy gregory whoever's healthy and able to rush the passer i think they can go to town and really cause some problems for the giants the only thing i would maybe err to the side of betting the giants here is it's a division game and they'll play close because of that um but i uncertainty at the quarterback position uh, even if it is Jones, you know, he hasn't just looked as good as he was at the beginning of the year as the offensive line's deteriorated. The weapons have become more and more unhealthy around him. And, you know, they have the defense, which is it's which is really encouraging. But uh and Patrick Graham I think is a great DC, but that can only get you so far. And I think the Cowboys need to start finding offensive success and that starts this week, right? So there's gonna be an extra honest to get that offense rolling so I, I think the Cowboys are able to cover this number Steelers Titans I'm gonna go with the Steelers I can't believe I'm doing this but only Julio Jones playing uh, of the dudes for right uh, for uh, the surrounding core around Ryan Tannehill right probably not gonna see Derrick Henry to the playoffs AJ Brown a week or two away so it's just Julio Jones and Julio Jones is a stud but he's, he's not the same guy he once was or at least not yet maybe once he gets further and further uh, you know into the lineup and and gets healthier along with it Maybe he'll move her back to that guy, but I just don't know if the Tennessee Titans have enough weapons to really force Pittsburgh's defense's hand. Instead, I think this is uh, Tennessee's offensive line's been really good in run uh, run blocking, not as great in pass block. Not that they're bad, but they're just not spectacular like they are in the running attack, which that could present problems for Pittsburgh as well. But I think Pittsburgh's pass rush could be in for a big day. T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward, and company could uh, have a monster showing, and. You know, it, are we going to get the first half of that Thursday night game against the Vikings Steelers offense? Or are we going to get the second half? That's a huge question mark. But uh, although the Titans defense has been playing pretty well, I think Pittsburgh might be able to steal this one. And it just feels like one of those Tomlin games where you really you look at it and you're like, Pittsburgh really has no business winning that contest. But the Titans aren't at a hundred percent, and I think Pittsburgh at home has 10 days of rest right after playing last Thursday. Got embarrassed through the first 30 minutes of that game. I've never seen a half be that putrid in Pittsburgh Steelers franchise history. So I think there's a lot to play for, pride especially, and I think Mike Tomlin's going to have his team ready to go. So some of the emotional elements, the fact Tennessee's not healthy, I'll take Pittsburgh to win at home this upcoming Sunday. Jags and Texans, um, I'm taking the Texans to win. If you give me five points with it, 
Absolutely. I know Urban Meyer's out, which, you know, that might signal a good thing, positive uh, progression moving forward for a lot of people. But that is a huge change to be made on a Thursday as I check my phone to see when I got this notification. Huge change to make on a, oh, maybe it was yesterday, Wednesday or today on a Thursday before your team plays on Sunday. So that, that's a huge shift. Uh, and maybe that just further motivates the Jags, but I'll take the Houston Texans to win and I guess sweep this season series. Packers and Ravens, if, especially if there's no Lamar Jackson, give me Green Bay to win and cover this five-point mark. Two teams heading in opposite directions right now. The Ravens are cooling off after a pretty good start, and the Packers are number one seed in the NFC, right? So heading in different directions, to say the least. Bengals and Broncos. I'm surprised Denver's favored in this game. Um, I'll take Cincinnati to get back on track. I also like the over in this contest. Um, barring any crazy injury I'm just like oblivious to right now, um, Cincinnati's a better football team. Uh, now, that said, the Broncos' defense does present some matchup problems. Right? This is maybe the deepest secondary in football, right? Pass or tan against Jamar Chase. That's a fun rookie battle. And then Ronald Darby's played pretty well over the last couple of weeks. He might have what it takes to try to limit the amount of production they can get out of T. Higgins. And then Tyler Boyd versus uh, um, Bryce Callahan, one of the best slot corners in football. Wow, <laughs> to say the least. Joe Mixon, if, if he's completely healthy, might be the biggest advantage they have in this game. Not necessarily running the football, which I think they can do, but as a pass catcher at a backfield, right? This linebacking core for the Broncos has been pretty depleted. They've had to resort to a lot of different options. They've had to make moves throughout the season, trying to just fill that area because they have nonstop injuries in that group. So Mixon might be in for a big day as a pass catcher, and that would be a huge advantage for the Bengals. But since I just better. And I know the defense hasn't been as good of, of late, but they still have the pass rush to try to make an impact in this contest. And ultimately, this is going to play like a close game, I think. And in that case where it's a potential coin coin toss, it's always tough to win in Denver. Um, I'll take the team getting the points. So in this case, it's uh, Cincinnati. Then we get to the 49ers and Falcons. I'll take San Francisco to win. Need to get back on track. Uh, but nine points is kind of a lot. I think San Francisco will be able to cover the nine. The more I think about it, th- this this defense for Atlanta is just not good outside of AJ Terrell and, and Deion Jones, Grady Jarrett. They have some players, but it's just not a unit that plays well uh, all together. And uh, now I know the 49ers defense has been great, but Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, those guys are still difference makers. And that Falcons offensive line is not good. And Matt Ryan, this year I think he's actually had a couple of games and there's been times I've watched where he looks okay against pressure, which is... Kind of weird to say considering he's 33, 34 years old. Normally you don't see that progression in that area. But I think he's actually gotten a little better against uh, pressure this season. Maybe because he's he's felt so much of it, he's kind of been forced to. But I think Bosa and Armstead alone might be able to cause enough havoc to uh, keep Atlanta you know, down by double figures, which is basically what you're saying with the spread. So I'll take San Francisco to win and to cover that nine-point mark. Rams... And Seahawks, we'll have to see how the COVID situation plays out for the Rams. Is Jalen Ramsey back? Will OBJ be able to play? Who, by the way, has looked fantastic. What a great addition to that offense. Who would have thunk a great talent would make a big impact? But uh, I'll take the Rams to make it a couple of wins in a row after, you know, they had that three-game losing streak with the bye in the middle of it. Take the Rams to continue this hot streak and pick up another win against a divisional opponent. Uh, I know Russell Wilson and Seattle's offense looked a little better last week, but... um, It'll be interesting to see how it fares against a team that's not Houston. Uh, so that said, I think they'll get a real challenge this week, and I think the Rams will be able to win and cover that mark. Then we get to the Bucks and the Saints. I'm taking the Bucks to win. I know the Saints are three and zero against Brady in the regular season, but this is not Drew Brees. This is not Jameis Winston. Even though the game earlier this year was mostly Trevor Simeon. It's not Trevor Simeon. It's, you know, Taysom Hill, and that has not looked pretty. Um, additionally, the Bucks are getting healthy. When you look at that first meeting, their their secondary was desolate, right? It was devoid of their normal crew. Those guys are back now. Apologies, a little recording hiccup there. But to continue my point, Richard Sherman, I think, might even be back this week, and he'll be playing this combo safety corner role. Interested by that. That's always a fun move to see a corner move to safety, like Kareem Jackson, like Charles Woodson, of course, as well. Um, I'm just going to take Tampa Bay to win, and I think this is going to be a snooze fest of a Sunday night game. Sorry, everybody. That's kind of a, a bummer uh, on prime time. And then we get to Monday Night Football. I'll take the Vikings to win and cover this mark. This is a must-have contest for the Vikings to be able to get into the playoffs. I know Kirk Cousins does not look good on primetime TV. I do not take joy in picking Minnesota to win this game. But they're just a better football team, right? Fields had some moments in the first half. 
last week against Green Bay where he didn't look too bad. A lot of help from the special teams unit. Jakeem Grant kind of went wild against the Packers. Back-to-back division games for Chicago. You got to think some of that fatigue is wearing in. And, I mean, this is just not as competitive a football team as maybe we had hoped coming into the season. Because on paper, you look at that defense, it's encouraging. Justin Fields gave you some moments as a, fr- or as a rookie, I should say. And it just has not come together. And I don't think this team has fully maximized Allen Robinson. Darnell Moody's been a nice addition. But I don't know if this is the team, the offense, the right moment for them at least to take advantage of what is not a very good Minnesota secondary. Um, also, Jason Peters gets hurt last week. So I, I know it's not a great Minnesota pass rush. But at this point, it's not necessarily a great Chicago offensive line. Though Devin Jenkins did look okay in his first little bit of play as a rookie. So... It might, they might be able to just go on without missing a beat, but I'll take Minnesota. I think they can stop the running game, which is really the only part of the Chicago offense I worry about. And on the other side of the football, as long as they continue to target Justin Jefferson, I think good things are going to happen for this Minnesota team. So I'll take the Vikings to win and cover this upcoming Monday night football. Uh, three and a half points. We'll see. The hook makes it tough, but that's going to do it for my week 15 NFL picks. Tell me what you think down in the comment section. What are some of your favorite picks of the week? Some upset picks would be great as well. Hopefully you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit that like button. It would help me out a ton if you're new to the channel. Hit that subscribe button to see more football content in your life. That's going to do it for me. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Till next time, my name is Tej, and I'm signing off.